All right. Today we try to prove this simple fact. So it says if you choose any six people in the world, you can find any random, you know, six people. You can always find three of them that are mutual friends. In other words, they know each other, or they're totally stranger with each other. All right. So how do we prove that? Of course, before you do that, you may try to imagine six people that you know or you don't know, and play it on the paper different combination to see why that is the case. All right. So if you like, you can pause the video and think about it. And when ready, you continue. Now, this is based on what is commonly referred as pigeonhole principle. It says, if there are m items, right, we、we'll、try to put into n containers, and if m is greater than n, of course, you know m and n here are integers, right? You know, integers, positive integers. So, so you try to put m items. Into n containers, but you have more items than the containers. What this print pigeon hole principle? Sometimes we say just、uh, you know PHP、uh, for shorthand notation. At least one container must contain more than one item. Looks like common sense, right? So it turns out that the problem here can be solved using the PHP, right? So here, proof. By PHP. So here's the reason, right? So for six people, if we pick, let's say a person, one of the person, that person could be、um, given a name, right? This person P, right? And then you're gonna have five other people, right? Because among the six, this P is one person, and then. For these five people, you can divide it into either the P's friends, or P's stranger, right? So into two boxes here, right? And you have five people. You try to fit in. Into two boxes, right? So this is the pigeonhole principle in the、um, original form. But there's another form is if, for example, if m is greater than some constant of n, then there must be more than that, more than one item. Must more than k plus one or more items in one container. So, for example, that makes sense, right? Because if、uh, you put k element in each container, at the most you can put k times n objects. But then, if you have more objects, you have m items, then At least one container must contain at least k plus one or even more, right? So in this case, so you have you have five people, right? You have two containers here, and one must contain at least three objects, right? So either three people, three people go here, right? This is friends and strangers, right? Peace. So there's two cases. If you have three people here, you know, case number one. I have at least three people here, right? So let's call it A, B, C. That are friends of with P, right? Or case number two, some you may 
have three people over here. Maybe this is D, E, F, right? So these are strangers. Or for that matter, let's also call them A, B, C, right? So that makes sense, right? So you have five people. And in considering put, are they friends for this P? Let's don't call it P, let's call it a real name. Let's assume this poor guy is called Tom, right? So one person is Tom. Now the remaining five people, you know, you're gonna you're gonna put five people into two containers, right? So the pigeonhole principle says if you put five objects into two containers, then at least one of the container would contain three or more people. All right. So here you say you have three people that are all friends with Tom, right? Or three strangers that are all strangers with Tom. You know, A does not know Tom, B does not know Tom, C does not know Tom either, right? Now, here we assume the relationship are mutual. So you cannot be the case where, you know, and Tom is a friend of A, but A is not a friend of Tom. So that's not the case, all right? So, but how do we prove that we can find three people who know each other? Right now you have three people, but you're not sure if, if A, if they, do they know each other or not, right? But let's think about it, right? So if they know each other, right, we're done. But maybe they're not know each other. Maybe they only one of them know each other. So you have, so among these cases, so here, you may have a case where, you know, only, you know, like A and B know each other. A, B, know each other doesn't have to be a b anybody could it be a c could it be b c so if there is a pair of friends then what happens is this pair and tom you're going to form three people where they all know each other tom knows a a knows b b knows tom so knows because everybody here knows Tom, right? So you may say, what if nobody knows each other? What if they're all the strangers? Or A, B, C, a total strangers. So if A, B, C are total strangers, right? So in this case, this is total strangers. They don't know each other. Either way, I'm done, right? I can I find three strangers, right? Or I find three friends earlier. If one of them know each other, and then with Tom, we got that, All right? So now let's think about the other case, right? If there are three people, they're all strangers of Tom, right? So is our statement still true? So let's think about it. Let's use similar reasoning, right? Do they know each other? Does A, B, C know each other? You know, maybe they do. Right? If they do know each other, then we're done, right? So either A, B, C all know each other. So if that is the case, I have find three people that know each other. I'm done, you know, I can find three people and mutual friends with each other. What if there are What if here you know maybe B and A are stranger, right? Right? Or somebody are strangers, 
right? Then in that case, Tom, A, and B, the three people, are total strangers with each other, right? So or or one pair, right? One pair of stranger among A, B, C. You know, if that pair is A, B, and then A, B, and Tom. If that pair is A, C, is a stranger, then A, C, and Tom, three strangers. So, so we have proven that no matter, you know, how these people are related with each other, we can always find either three friends or three strangers. All right. So based on uh, um, this uh, pigeonhole principle. All right. That's it for today. Thanks.